and welcome to my channel. Today I want to show you just how easy it is to copy and tea dye papers. I am a 100% novice. I just started this hobby of junk journaling. Well, I started collecting supplies um, a month or so ago and I just started working on my first ones, which are for my grandson. But if you watch my channel, you already know that. Sometimes you want your papers to look vintage. You want to give them just a little bit, like I say, a little bit of character, a little bit of something other than just plain stark white. And sometimes you want plain stark white, but it's nice to have options. Today, we're just working with coffee and tea. In the future, we'll do one with colors because I also color my paper with um, acrylic paint and then some food coloring. So we'll do that at another date. But I just wanted to share this with you if you decided you wanted to, to try your hand at junk journaling or even if you just doing a diary book, a glue book, a um, scrapbook, what, whatever kind of thing you, you do that you use papers for that you might want to have some, some vintage looking papers. I want to show you how easy it is. And very untechnical, I am not technical. <laughs> <laughs> I am not technical in this video whatsoever. So let's just turn around and get started. To get started, we're going to coffee dye first. And I just want to show you the equipment that I used. Every bit of it came from the Dollar Tree. First time I did it, I used my own baking sheets and pans and things. But then you got to wash it and put it back up. It, so much easier just to buy these from the Dollar Tree. I have a little paper bag that when everything's dry, I just slide it right in there. It's got handles on it. I can carry it right back to the kitchen. So I got my whisk. It just helps blend your coffee or your paint if you're doing colors. This is to put the solution in. This we're going to use the first time today to try to make some patterned paper. And then these are Okay, I got these for, um, what did I get these for? I think these were for my smaller, okay, these, I had to stop and think for a minute. These were for my pieces that I did not want a pattern on because th these were from the Dollar Tree too. But now that's not rust, that's where I did have done colors on it. But if you see this, you see that texture? The bottom few layers will have that texture on it. And you don't want texture on every single page that you use. So I have six of these because I have three racks in my oven and two fit perfectly side by side. So I can do six at one time. So the first thing we want to do, preheat your oven to 250. Now this coffee... It also comes from the Dollar Tree. It's just plain old cheap instant coffee. I have some hot water. I, I didn't boil it because I don't really want to wait forever for it to cool and it doesn't take... You can dissolve it in cold water, but I think it does quicker in um, hot. Now you don't need... We're not doing that many sheets. Let me find my paper. Hold on. I'm only going to do this many sheets, so you see I don't need it to be that deep. Just enough to go over those papers. Then, this is real technical. You just pour some. <laughs> it really depends on how dark you want your paper. And then, the whisk, you could do this with your hands, but I wouldn't suggest it in the hot water. The whisk just helps get it all stirred around. Put just a hair more in there because I really want that pattern to show. Yeah, that's looking good. Now, all you're going to do, and I've done a uh, stack twice that big or more, and you can do it all together. It works, I promise you. Just stick it all down in there. Of course, make sure it's. Um, we 
okay, not too hot to touch. <laughs> Just push it down in the. I could probably get a little bit more water in that. Now we're just going to let this sit a few minutes and give it time to soak in and then we will come back and separate the papers to help them soak through the middle um, better. Okay, so I just filmed my little spot and did not turn the camera on. So it's already soaked in, but this is what you do. I let it go like four minutes or so. Pick it up and maybe about five at a time. See, it's already soaked in, so when you do like that, well, there's one little spot. It'll be still white paper in the middle, so you want to mash it down. Like I said, I've already done it. I just forgot to turn on the camera, but let's say that's still white in the middle. You just want to pull it down, press it down, and do that all the way till you get to the top. Now, the longer you leave it in here, the darker it's going to get, and I already have some pretty dark paper, so I don't want mine super duper dark. I'm probably going to give it another five minutes, and then we will put it on our trays. Okay, it's been about another five minutes, and I'm putting this on one of my baking sheets. I have the oven preheated at 250. So I just want to, and you can lay a good little stack. Believe me, you think it's not going to work if you're just drying on regular. But this stack right here, they will dry and they will crunch apart. <laughs> it's crazy. The first time I did it, I didn't think it was going to work. The only thing, when you're doing patterns, I have found, it does not go through a big, you can still dry it um, if you just want some patterns and then some plain. I'm trying to get more patterns this time. So it will only go through like so many on the bottom. And let me do these two and then we're going to try something totally new. This is going to be an experiment right here on TV, on TV, on YouTube. <laughs> and these these will go seven to ten minutes. I check mine very regularly. Now steam will come out of the back of your oven, but I have found it is not smoke, although you want to check it to make sure it's steam when the water is evaporating out of this paper so it's steam that's coming out of the back now let me set these aside because i can't get to my oven right now and i'm going to show you our experiment this i found hold on okay i am sorry this i found at my local thrift store i don't know what it is unless it's some kind of table dolly type situation but it's that twisted paper ribbon that's why i bought it i would not put plastic in the oven but i figure paper and it's going to have wet paper on it I, I feel safe doing that but what i want to do first is put some on the bottom because i want to see if it will pattern both sides uh, both sides of the this if it's going to weight that down on there if maybe I can get dual purpose out of it. I'm put a little bit more on the top, even if they don't pattern, just to weight it down. That might be a little bit more than I want to put. Just well, maybe I won't put that much. <laughs> And then we will just finish off the rest of the paper on just this, which I don't mind. I have plenty of plain paper and patterned paper, but I don't mind having any more of this right here. 
So hold on. Oops, sorry about that. This will be my last. Now, I'm going to pop this in the oven, and when we come back, we're going to start on our tea and let it be steeping while these are in the oven. So hang on just a minute. While the water is back there boiling for the tea, I want to show you some things that we're going to work on today. Some dollies, different sizes of those, some small sketch pad papers, some bridge cards. They're a little bit already tan, so they should take color. Oh, looky there. I don't know how you score a bridge, but somebody worked in that one. Some tickets. A to-do list. This friendly receipt, friendly parties, toys receipt book. Some graph paper. And some of these old ledger paper notebooks that my mama got when I was a kid from where she worked where they were getting rid of and these things are probably oh well they're probably 35 or 40 years old at least at least <laughs> and these are the last two that I still have I wish I had more ledger paper but I've not found any at the thrift store yet so I just want to do just a few little odds and ends of these things. All right, now for these papers, because most of these are a little, well, most of them are a little bit more fragile, and I don't want to do big sections at a time. I'll be doing a few at a time. I don't really need my water that deep. So what I want to do, these are some of the tea bags that Sweet Lou sent me. They smell so good too. I don't know if it's gonna um, smell my paper or not, but I just want to put. I want enough. He does not get as dark as coffee. I'll just tell you that right now. Green tea, I wouldn't suggest. White tea, I wouldn't suggest. Just plain old black tea or these, you know. These are flavored teas. You can really, really smell them. So, but I do want to make sure they're covered. So this is boiling water. I think it's best to use boiling water in tea for the fact I think it seeps it out faster and more efficiently. Now this we will let steep until it is cool because... <laughs> I will not be putting my hands in this. So while that is steeping and cooling off, we'll be checking our papers in the oven periodically. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes and that is, I've checked them a few times, but this is like the mark where I start flipping them over because like I said, I'm impatient. Now you can just leave them in there as long as it takes. I like to, now when you first open this up, don't stick your face in it because you're going to get a steamed facial. What I want to do is just flip these over because they will dry. Oh, my dots are barely working. You can see some. I don't know. not to rip it here yeah I don't know if I didn't get enough coffee if I didn't stain it long enough because I'm not really getting good um, marks on there I don't know if you can let's pull you up a little bit closer so we can see if this is even starting Oh, it's getting some blue on it. Oh, I'm going to like that. Okay, the bottom is getting just a little bit. Not much. You can see the patterns, though. Let's put this 
upside down. See if we can get some blue on the other side. I like that. I'm not sure how many it went through, but that'll be that'll be pretty. So I'm gonna pop that back in there. Okay, I admit I have not been watching the clock, but it's probably been another five or six, seven minutes, something like that. But I wanted you to see the one on the bottom. Hold on. Let me. This is the one you saw we flipped it over. I've not done anything else. You see how that came loose and you hear it? That paper is done. When you feel them, see that's starting to curl up. But it, it's still damp. You can feel the dampness. This is what I do. Yeah, we're not getting those dots. Flip it over. Hear the crinkle of the paper. It's got a little bit of round in it, but no dots. So I guess that was a big fat fail. But that's how the papers get done you just check them and pull them off individually see these are still wet so my impatience flips them again okay that paper is done That paper is done. Flip them a little bit more. Let's check the bottom. Okay, the bottoms are still wet. Now, this is what I'm going to do. Let me set that aside. Besides just flipping them on there. You know the old saying, hot air rises, cold air falls? So... I find the bottom, since it's close to the heat source, works fast, faster, the top works faster, and the middle kind of takes its time. So I play around with the different shelves too. So that's what we're going to do. I'm not going to show you any more of that. That's what we're going to do until everything is completely dried. We're just going to flip them. Now you can leave them in there and then just pull the tops off as you go. That's up to you. I just like to, I just like to hurry it along. <laughs> and our tea is cooling, but we can't um, dye anything yet until we get all this out of the oven and get our pans back. So the next thing is I'll show you when all the papers get done, and then we'll start on our tea. All right, all the papers are out. And if you can see just from this shot, that's not a shadow back there. Different pages stain different colors. This is the little stack that I had that was on that blue, whatever it was. And you can see there's different degrees of blue stain. But I think that made a, a pretty paper. I'll do that one again. Now I separate these so I don't have to go hunting for them. This um, stack is the ones that took on the bottom of the... See, there's a good one. Took on the bottom of the little bacon sheets. These are the ones that I consider a fail. You can see dots on this one. A few on this one around. And just very few on this one. So that was our experiment. And I... I won't worry about doing that one again because I don't think it was um, worth the trouble of doing the extra pan. Not that it hurt anything, but... And these are just the regulars. And see, this is a nice, um, just an antique look. Whereas if I left it in there longer, they would be darker, but I have plenty of dark ones. That's why I wanted to just do light that's what we're going to do with the tea but i'll show you what i do next with these papers this step is personal preference if you don't mind the bigger wrinkles then don't bother with this step this is just something i like to do first of all protect your 
ironing board with a piece of fabric or something in case some of the coffee or tea were to come through and stain your cover. Heat your iron to linen, no steam, and you're just going to easily, quickly just glide over. If you can see, I don't know if you can tell how much flatter you can even feel. Look, okay, look at the difference here. See if I can get that down there. Can you see the difference? Okay. See how wrinkly that is? I think it takes up because when you make your junk journal, you're going to have a lot of junk in it. And this just helps you take up a little less room. That's why I just come in here when I do big stacks of paper. I just iron a little bit and take a break and come back and iron a little bit more. And see? See the difference? So just go through and iron them all if you want to. And that is all there is to coffee dyeing paper. It just, it couldn't be any easier. If I can do it, anybody can do it. <laughs> so give it a shot if you want to, you might want it for scrapbook papers or any kind of papers that you just want to give a nice little vintage look to, just a little char character to it. Give it a try. Okay, so let's go in there and finish up on our tea. The, now that the other papers are out, the oven is still at 250. The tea is completely cool. Do not throw your tea bags away. What I said was you can use these tea bags. These are the mesh kind, so I don't know how they'll glue onto photo um, photos like from a magazine or different kind of cards and give it a, a vintage look, but we're going to dry them and we're going to use them. Definitely do not throw them away. Okay, now let's just set this aside. Just, just leave them out a few days to dry. And when they do, carefully undo the bag, empty out your dry tea, and save the bag. Now I'm already, you can see there's little bits of tea in the bottom. I have already taken apart what I want to stain. These are thick papers, so they're going to take longer. So I'm going to just let them sit down in here while I work on some of the other stuff. Same with these. These to-do sheets. They're also pretty thick, so I'm going to go ahead and put them down in there. With the tea, it does not stain as dark as the coffee, I don't think. Not from my experience. So these just kind of give it just a, a nice little old used kind of look. These are about the thickness of coffee paper, so we'll go ahead and put them down in there. And these are definitely thick, so we'll put them down in there. You can see it's, it's already taken on that color because of the color of the thing. I should have put these tickets at the bottom, but that's okay. Now, this is what I do with the doilies. I don't want them dark, so I'm just going to, and they're delicate too, so I'm just going to take it down just enough to get it with a little bit of tea on it. Let me see if I can do this without getting in front of the camera. And if it laps over, that's just fine. Let's see, I got some small ones here. Let's put some 
small ones over there. And that's just how I'm going to do all the dollies. Now I have four pans of dollies in. The next we'll do are these tickets. We'll throw a couple. Bridge cards on there. I wish you could smell my kitchen. Those were flavored tea bags, and the bacon of the paper is bringing up that smell. <laughs> it smells wonderful in here. What I want to do now is the same thing I did because I noticed some of those receipts didn't get tea on them. So let's go ahead and just check everything because these are still going to soak. Wow. The rest of that is in the oven. And see, not only when I'm doing that will it soak into the one down here, it'll soak into the one above it. So, you don't have to worry about doing every single one. Now, we're just going to leave that sit. And we'll do the exact same thing to these papers that we did to our copy paper. Is just check it and flip them if we need to but of course I'll show you the first time I flip them and show you how they look okay I'm not I'm bad about looking at the clock I'm not sure how long this has been here maybe 10 minutes something like that these were the first ones I put in see how they're already starting to dry that one is dry you hear it hear that See that little bit of color it put on it? That's all I want. That one's dry. That one's dry. There's just a little bit of moisture left on that. Let's see what these are doing. Okay, there's a little moisture in the middle. I can feel it. So I'm going to pop these. You know what? I'll leave those right there. These are not even close. So, let's put some of these other things in there. Let's put some to do. Now, I think I'm going to show you how you can put these directly on the wire shelves which is how I did my very first batch of coffee dyed paper and they dry out faster but you get the marks of the the rack on it and sometimes the paper kind of can go in between but you saw that I ironed the other ones so I think I'm going to show you how to do that since we're I just want to show you the option them off pretty good and just carefully without burning yourself just lay them up on the rack and that's all there is to that and we check them exactly the same I 100 forgot my graph paper. I went over there to put my dollies up and I saw my graph paper. So, guess what? We're going to let it soak 
while everything else is in the oven. We'll go ahead and while it's dry and easy to get a hold of. Oh, look at the, um, I can't tell if that blue is going to bleed or not, but if it does, that might be a cool look. Okay, it's been 10 minutes and we're going to check these um, ones that are right on the, okay, you see how that's already lifting up? You hear that? Okay, there's a little bit of wet right there, so we'll put that back in there. And that paper is ready. Those are starting to get ready. Now, this is what I was telling you about. It'll pick up the... Those are ready, I think. Let me see. I flipped those two. No way on there, but that's what I was telling you. It will pick up the rack, which that doesn't bother me. So let's flip these over. But you see how much faster after 10 minutes, how much faster the drying is going. I think these are sticking together because that's where they were glued. Okay, now what I did was. This is cool. This is the graph paper. And you can see how that blue, the blue lines ran. That's pretty. I, I'm um, excited about that. That'll be a, a nice pretty. And I'll still have graph paper for graph paper, but this has made a nice pretty blue paper. Well, almost aqua green. I still have a few things. Let's see. I think these are done. The tickets are done. And these are still, they're still working. Now here's how this batch of papers turned out. See the difference? And hold on a minute. I don't know if I took it in there. You know how white dollies are. But you see, just they give it that little bit of color. And then here are the tickets and some of the places. See, that one missed. But that's okay. It still has its own little look about it. Some of them. And then the bridge paper cards, I guess what you call them. School pad. These are the ones that we dried directly on the rack. Both of these. These are the tickets. The to-do list. We're going to take these in there and hold on a minute. And then this one's the one I was excited about. I don't know if you can see how pretty and blue these are. That's the graph paper. This was hiding on top of my white bag that I keep my supplies in and I missed it so we'll just get these another day now what I want to do is take these in there and see how some of these like this see how some of these extra crinkly ones will iron out all right here we are again our iron is on the linen setting with no steam we're going to see how well these crinkly specialty papers iron out. I say that did a pretty good job. Look here. From that to that. Now let's iron a ticket. We know those papers are going to do. Let's see how these tickets are going to do. This is a little bit different paper. I think they did real good. You see the difference. Okay. And then one more. We're going to do the dollies. Let's see. i get that out of the way there. Let's find one of these that's curled up. 
How about this one? See how it was laying in the pan. Did a great job. Look at there. Nice and flat. So now you have seen coffee dine, you have seen tea dine, and I hope this inspires you to do some of your own. And it, it shows you that it, it's not as daunting of a task as it might sound like. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you on my next one.